Hi, I'm Sandy from Lightning Tools, and I'm here again with Brett. Ciao, Brett. <laughs> Ciao, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> you speaking Italian now? <laughs> Buongiorno. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I had a great, uh, great time last week uh, in uh, in Italy. So we went to uh, Cinque Terre, nice. <laughs> which uh, was absolutely beautiful area. Um, it's uh, yeah, kind of the Riviera of uh, of Italy, and uh, yeah, really stunning, beautiful little towns. Very similar uh, to uh, if you've seen the Disney Luca movie. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, the little towns there is actually um, the inspiration for huh? Pontarosso <laughs> in that movie. So. Uh, cool. Yeah, it's a really, really beautiful place. Great food. Mm. We had lots mm -hmm. of sunshine. Everything is just perfect. Awesome. So yeah, very well refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, perfect. Just uh, just in time to show off some of the new features in Lightning Conductor, huh? Yeah, yeah. So I, I just had to remind myself a little bit um, as to uh, how to drive it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I can show some of these brand new features and I'm re really excited to, to do it. In fact, we're just going to focus in on one because uh, yeah. I don't want to steal too much from the webinar, which is mm -hmm. taking place this Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to um, see a bit more from, from this demo that we're going to do just now, uh, but on Thursday, you'll be able to see that and uh, and also some of the other new features like audience targeting and, and so okay. on too. Great. So, um, yeah, let me go and, and share my screen. So this okay. is just a, a follow on from from last week uh, mm -hmm. where we talked about some of the new features of the Lightning Conductor and, uh, and one of them being this ability to create your own views using adaptive cards. Mm -hmm. So um, what we'll uh, we'll do first of all is to show you some of the out of the box uh, adaptive cards and I'm, I'm going to build a new page to, to do this. So uh, in here we'll add a new page. And let's uh, just give it a name of Lightning Conductor. There we go. And in here we'll add. Oops. Once that disappears, <laughs> there we go. We'll add the Lightning Conductor. There we go. So, um, so here it is. And so when I hit configure, uh, if you're familiar with the Lightning Conductor, we have two different ways of configuring it. One is the quick configuration, which um, is designed where you can get up to speed very very quickly uh, obviously and then uh, the other one is the advanced mode so you would use the advanced mode if there was specific uh, list types that you wanted to work with or or specific content that we've just not addressed here um, but uh, in here we've got all of the sort of common scenarios that you might want to work with such as you know SharePoint document libraries and task lists and event lists and, and so on but also some of those Microsoft graph uh, entities such as uh, Microsoft to do and planner and OneDrive items outlook events etc and um, when you choose the type of content that you want to work with uh, there's some built-in filters that you you can choose or you can obviously create your own filters as well either in the advanced mode or or actually also inside the, the grid editor if you choose that option um, and you can also choose where that content is going to come from so i'm going to go with the current hub and any associated sites now when you're in the advanced mode you can be very specific as to where that content is going to come from uh, down to individual lists and, and so on if you want to now, typically, um, we'd be either working with the grid view, which is going to give you a sort of column row format of your content. It's going to look very much like a SharePoint view. It will give you the ability to add conditional formatting and add additional columns if you want to. Uh, you can do grouping and, and summary functions and all of that sort of thing. Um, we also have a calendar view, which is a JSON view. Uh, built into the uh, into the Lightning Conductor for anything really that has a start date and an end date. So you can use this with um, SharePoint uh, event list or, or task list or even a custom list if you want to. Um, and over on the far right here is the cards view. So that is a brand new feature. Yes, this is the uh, adaptive card. So I'm going to select that and hit save, which is all I need to do because I'm in the quick configuration. And, uh, and what you'll see is we do have this card view. Uh, right at the very top is uh, some ways where I can go through and sort the content still so we can sort by due date, for example. Uh, we could also filter out the items too. So in here we could go through and add a filter, uh, perhaps based on uh, the completed status. Uh, so we can go through and check whether that's completed or not. Uh, so if I check that one, then uh, we'll be able to see any tasks that we have completed. And of course we could reverse that to show the ones we've not completed, etc. And uh, we've also got the ability to go through in either view 
um, the, the items that will take us to the item itself, or we can also edit and that edit is in line. So, uh, so in here, you can simply go through and maybe change the status a little bit. So we could say we've, uh, yeah, let's go through and say we completed it. Um, and since it didn't have a start date, we'll add one and likewise with a due date. So, uh, so once I hit update on that, that's actually going to write that back to the SharePoint list for me. So, um, so yeah, that's using the, uh, the the quick configuration for tasks. And uh, what I'm also going to do is add a, another view. So we'll we'll label this one. We'll call this one tasks, and I'll add a new view, and um, we'll call this one events. So those two built-in adaptive cards that you can work with. Uh, so this one here is the uh, events adaptive card. So notice how we can go through and select events now. And uh, with this one, we'll be able to see each of the different events that we've got inside those event lists, inside that hub and, and the associated sites. And uh, we've also got the sort of icon here showing the start and end date and uh, who's invited to that event and, and so on. Um, so that's using just the built in ones. Now you can absolutely build your own adaptive cards yeah, and you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to be um, you know, a developer uh, in order to to do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is just go through and add an advanced one. In fact, let me do that in a different site because I know we've got some different content here. So we'll add a new page inside this other site. And uh, once more, we'll add the lightning conductor. And we'll configure the lightning conductor. So this time we're going to bypass the quick configuration and jump into the advanced mode. So while I'm in the advanced mode, I've got the different types of data source provider that I can work with. So this determines whether you're going to be pointing the lightning conductor at Microsoft Graph or whether you're pointing it at SharePoint Search um, or even the Microsoft uh, 365 groups. I'm going to use the object model, which will give me real time results uh, from the different SharePoint lists or libraries. And uh, we've then got the type of display. So historically, we'd have three, uh, the grid view, the JSON view and XSLT. Um, but now we've got the adaptive cards display provider. So that's one I'm going to choose. And uh, we can select what our data source is. Uh, so in here, I'm just going to go through and choose the current site and associated sites again and the list type is going to be tasks. So uh, we'll go through and choose that. And then on the columns tab, we can select the different columns that we want to make available. Now, usually we'd be selecting these if, we, if we're using the grid view, these would actually be columns as I select them. I hit save. <clears throat> they would be the columns that are shown inside my view. What I'm going to be doing here is actually making them available as objects that I can bind to when I'm building an adaptive card. So we've got things like the percent complete and the due date, uh, who it was created by maybe would be useful and who it's assigned to. And of course, we've also got things like the uh, the priority, the start date and the task name. So these can be all of the different columns I want to uh, select. Note that you can also add calculated columns as well if you wanted to do concatenations or, or anything like that. Now, when I jump to the display tab, you'll notice that we've got some sample input data. Which so might that scare looks you completely different first. from uh, <laughs> yeah from what you would be used to seeing on the display tab. This is a completely different. This page. is a completely new uh, tab. Yeah. So notice this is the adaptive card. So what we're doing here is uh, this is about loading some sample data um, and configuring things like the card dimensions, uh, the the layout of the cards, and and so on as well. And you're going to end up with your design and I'm going to show you how we can produce that design in just a moment. But as we go down, you can also filter and sort by the different columns and set your pagination. And uh, you can also uh, create the ability to write back as well, mm. uh, should you want to in here too. So the input data uh, that is going to be used by the adaptive card designer which is great to be able to preview what your card is going to look like. So notice that it says one item in here at the moment. And if you look carefully, you'll see that we do have one item returned uh, in the uh, JSON format here. So we've got the percent complete. We've got the assigned to the author and basically one row of information from one of the items inside my list. Just to use uh, as a sample. Exactly. So, um, so what we're going to do is copy that. So uh, we'll copy that into the clipboard 
And then I'm going to click this link here, which will take me to the adaptive card designer, which is a Microsoft thing. It's not mm -hmm. a lightning tools thing. So this can be used for a variety of different things. Sandy, I think you've mentioned that you've used this a lot in the past with power apps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, with power automate. Oh, uh, sorry, power automate yeah. <laughs> rather. Um, so yeah, you can use the same tool uh, with inside the lightning conductor. Now you'll notice in here, we've got the um, card payload editor and the sample data editor. So this is the sample data. This is where we're gonna put our single row of, of data. So I'm gonna select all the content inside this sample data editor, and I'm gonna paste in that one row that we're getting back from the lightning conductor. And you'll notice that the adaptive card kind of breaks a little bit because this was actually pointing at the old sample data that mm -hmm. had different field names and, and so on. But all we need to do is bind these different controls. And of course you can change them uh, the, the layout of them as well, uh, but we can go through and bind these to the different fields then that has been returned from the lightning conductor. So, so, so remember, bind is really meaning kind of connect. Join, uh, connect, I, I, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I remember I, I stumbled over that term a little bit at the beginning when I was starting to do power apps and they were talking about binding controls and I'm like, what? I'm not a developer. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so basically binding it to the data source, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So um, yeah, it, it's just telling it what data to go through and display in this is in this window. Uh, so yeah, in here we've got um, this bit that did uh, point to the creator name. I'm going to actually change that and point that to the title of my task. So um, so in here we did select the title column. There it is. So I can choose that and notice how it says update presentation slides, which if I just jump back here, that is the title of that mm. current item uh, that I had. Um, so so that's the, the, the title and the date. We could also go through and bind. So I, I could bind that. Still on the first one. What are you seeing? Uh, I think your bind there is still connected to your. Oh, thank you. OK, <laughs> so if, if I come down to the created date, we can also bind that. So I could bind that to the due date mm -hmm. um, and, and so on. And likewise with the description and, and anything else that we want to uh, to set in here. So whilst I'm making those changes, that's writing out to this card payload editor here. Mm -hmm. So we can make all the changes that we want to make. Uh, we can change the formatting and, and so on. And then once I'm done, I can basically copy that and drop that into our lightning conductor here. Mm -hmm. uh, so that becomes the display, if you like, for the uh, the, the content that we're working with. Um, and uh, yeah, once we uh, we hit save, uh, again, that might be a little bit broken because I hadn't finished it. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can see here we've got the update presentation slides, uh, but we've also got update battle cards and we've got update website with new features and so on. And these are all my tasks that are, have been aggregated from the, the lightning conductor being displayed uh, in there. Nice. Thank you. So um, see also in here is um, the ability to select what type of card you want to work with. So if I was to say a new card, notice that, I mean, of course you can do whatever you want, but in here is some great ones to get going with. So if you wanted to work with a page, uh, sorry, a uh, image library. Um, there's one here that we could work with, which uh, works really nice. Uh, of course, you've got weather things and so on. So if you had custom lists, you could absolutely come through and, and choose some of these that might be useful for your uh, examples. Uh, this is one that we just used for tasks and just above it is the one that we used for events and uh, and so on. So yeah, we could choose one of those. And then of course you get to bind each of those controls to the Lightning Connect content. Uh, mm -hmm. as you just saw. So that is basically the high level view of mm -hmm. uh, of adaptive cards and, and how they can work inside the Lightning Conductor. And, uh, and really, you know, it means that you can build whatever view you want. You're in full control right. of that. You don't, although you're doing codey stuff, you're not actually <laughs> sat there writing code. Per uh -huh. se, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I especially like the fact that you can create actionable cards like you showed about being able to edit the the tasks that um, that maybe does take a little bit more effort, but um, but there are samples of of doing that as well on that uh, adaptive card designer site. Yeah, and and I think um, in general, there are samples of other kind of samples of adaptive cards out there on the Internet as well similar to like looking up JSON formats, which I think people are, have gotten used to doing for SharePoint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, there, there's lots of resources here to help you, which is uh, mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. 
Yeah. So, so yeah, we'll be, nice. doing it, we'll be doing that on uh, on Thursday okay. uh, in, in our webinar, so you can sign okay. up for that one. And yes. um, we should be releasing uh, this version of the Lightning Collector this week, uh, okay. which is uh, week commencing the 19th of April. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, look forward to, uh, to, to getting that available for you. Great, great. Looking forward to, oh, well, I have been playing with it a little bit, but uh, you're looking forward to having our, our customers and, and also new people getting to do that. So, because I, I think, um, yeah, being able to show content from anywhere in SharePoint and well, even outside SharePoint with using Microsoft Graph and and being able to display that in any way you want, that's, that's a superpower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Sandy, it's great to chat with you again. Yeah. And um, yeah, look forward to, uh, to to the webinar like I say, on, on Thursday and okay. uh, our next Lightning chat where we'll be talking about um, the Lightning Forms suite. Yep. So. yep. Okay. All right. Great. I'll talk to you later, Brett. Sounds good. Take care, Bye. Sandy. Bye-bye.